So now I'm going to discuss the two sample t-test. The two sample t-test is used oftentimes when we have a single treatment group and a control group. Okay, and we want to make a comparison to see whether or not uh, the group of the treatment uh, group has better results or worse results, whatever it is, than the control group. All right. Sometimes we also maybe want to like compare two different populations, right? And in this case, that would be the control group is one population and the treatment group is another population. All right. So let's take a look at this example. Suppose that you wanted to determine if FICO scores of Santa Ana residents are lower than FICO scores of Irvine residents. So those are our two populations. Santa Ana residents, Irvine residents, and we're comparing in this case FICO scores, right? These are our credit scores, okay? To do, to do this, we could conduct two simple random samples, one from Santa Ana and one from Irvine, and then we survey the FICO scores. So it's a pretty easy uh, experimental design. Two random samples, one from one population, Santa Ana, the other one from a, another population, Irvine, and then what we're going to do is we're going to compare their average FICO scores. Okay, so this is going to be a comparison of average FICO scores. For two populations. So now that we have an idea of what, what it is that we're doing, Right. What I want to do now is I actually want to determine, you know, my null hypothesis, my alternative hypothesis. Anytime we have a multi-sample uh, experiment, we need to determine who's going to be which sample. So we're going to make sample one be Santa Ana residents, and sample two is going to be Irvine residents. And the reason why that's going to matter is because it's going to matter in terms of the mathematical sign that we use. Okay. Not in terms of the English so much, but the math is going to make it matter a lot. So my H naught is going to be mu one, right? The mean score for Santa Ana residents is equal to mu two, and that, uh, in in words, is the um, mean FICO score for Santa Ana residents is the same as the mean FICO score for Irvine residents. Now, the next piece here for alternative HA, we're gonna to need to determine the, uh, the, um, the sign. Now, if you remember, what we said was we wanna prove or we wanna test if Santa Ana residents Santa Ana residents have lower FICO scores than Irvine residents. So this will be mu1 is less than mu2. Or conversely, this would be mu1 minus mu2 is less than zero. We do a little bit of algebra. So our alternative stated is the mean FICO score for Santa Ana residents. is less than the mean FICO score for Irvine residents. And there we go. All right, so our, our null is the two are actually equal, and the alternative is the one that I actually am hypothesizing, that is, is that mu1 Santa Ana residents have lower FICO scores than Irvine residents. Next up, I'm gonna examine the data. So in examining the data, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna check the requirements for the test. I need one of these three things to be true. I don't need all three of them to be true. I need one of the three. Either FICO scores are normally distributed in the national population. That's actually true, they're normalized. So they are kind of normal. Um, that may not be true any longer, but nonetheless, we'll be okay. The sample sizes for both samples are over 30, or there are no major divergences for normality. We also need a simple random sample, and the samples need to be independent. That is that they're not pulled from the same population. We already know that, at least if we did what we said we were going to do, that in fact we were pulling one sample from Santa Ana and the other sample from Irvine. So I go into my data, and in my data I take a look and I look at, here's my Santa Ana group.
All right, and there's my Irvine group. And if you notice, right, if I keep going down, 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 keep going down for a while. All right, I have a hundred from each. Now the cool thing about um, uh, independent samples, I don't need this, the same amount from each group. I could actually have, say, for example, 55 from Irvine and um, 100 from Santa Ana. It really wouldn't matter. As long as they're both over three, 30 or we have, you know, no big divergences, like we have no huge outliers inside of the data set. So N1, okay, is equal to 100, which is greater than 30. And N2 is equal to 100. And it's greater than 30 so right our requirements are met right we have we already discussed the other two but our requirements are met so now I can go on and actually run the test so I went in I ran the test and I see that okay here's my two sample T hypothesis test mu1 is the mean of Santa Ana FICO mu2 is the mean of the Irvine FICO scores so I've got my right order and I'm saying mu1 minus mu2 is less than zero. Now when I go down here and look at my results, my sample difference is positive. What that means is that on average, at least for the samples that I took, Santa Ana residents had higher FICO scores than Irvine re residents on average. Okay, on average they had the higher FICO scores. Hmm, right? My T stat was 0.183 and my P value is 0.5725, right? Well, normally is equal to 0.05. P, okay, was equal to 0.5725. P is actually greater than alpha here, okay? Not only that, P is so, so big, okay, that actually we kind of got the reverse. I mean, we can't conclude that from here, but what we definitely could say is, is that, at least according to our data, Santa Ana residents do not have lower FICO scores than Irvine residents. In fact, according to our data, they're higher, okay? But when it comes to statistical significance and testing, we look at these two scores, alpha and P, we make a comparison and we say, you know what, I'm gonna fail to reject the null hypothesis. And when I look at it and think about it in terms of the context of the problem that I'm working in, failing to reject the null hypothesis means that in fact, the um, there we can we have to assume that their FICO scores are the same. We're going to say our evidence says this is the one that has the most evidence for it. That's what supports it. Okay, we do not, we cannot conclude, we cannot conclude that Santa Ana residents have lower FICO scores. Okay, that's what we got, and that's the result. So we go in, we think very systematically through it. We say, okay, what is it that we're trying to prove? All right, how is it they're conducting the experiment? What's the test that we're running? Okay, then once we've decided what the test is that we're running, we've got to figure out what our null and alternative hypotheses are based upon that test, right? The two sample T's got a very specific set of null and alternative hypotheses. Then finally, we, uh, we go in, we look at our, our requirements, make sure that we actually can find a mathematical relationship, and then we see what our results are. And that allows us to make our conclusions. It allows us to answer our questions. This completes the video.